All right, so I wanna. I, I noticed this this YouTube thing, or not these YouTube, this Google thing a while ago, um, and I'm sure all of you have seen it. It's this effect that it kind of pops out the image and goes away. I want to do this effect. There's a website that I'm working on called um, CMI VFX, and we have these blocks that are very similar to those uh, Google blocks. Now, I'd really love to see that pop out effect. And I thought about it, that's actually a really useful effect. So let's go ahead and make it into a jQuery plugin as well, so it can be used for anything. So let's get started doing that. So, first of all, I always, whenever I make a plugin, I kind of want to do the plugin call first. So I want to see what, what the call is going to be, see how easy it's going to be to use. Okay. So to do that, we're just going to gun it. So, okay, first of all, let's figure out what these are. So if I open Firebug and I inspect one of these elements, okay, one of these giant boxes is a product box, okay? It's a class product box, okay? So that's firstly what we're going to be using. So it's going to be dot product box, okay? Um, and then I'm going to call the, uh, the plugin, it's going to be called pop out, right? And then it's going to take some parameters. I mean, we're going to want to feed it some parameters. And the parameters are going to be um, things I want to change. So I want to, I'm going to want to alter the height to 300 pixels, because right now it's not. Um, right now it's. I don't know, like 220. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna. I want the height to be more. So one of the reasons for this. Let me put that out there. These descriptions are being cut off, and I'd love for this to get bigger and then actually show me the description. So I'm gonna change the height to 300. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, I'm gonna give it a border just because when it pops out, I want it to really pop. Um, so one pixel solid, and then because of the color scheme, I'm just gonna do threes, and then. That's all for now. There is one more, but I'm not going to get into it yet. We're going to add that later. Okay, so that's the call that I want to make. So that's great. So let's actually write this dollar sign dot fn dot pop out. That's how you write a jQuery plugin equals a function. Okay, now into this, uh, we always do this dot each. Um, this dot each. I believe it's over function, right? right. Ugh, get confusing here. Return this dot each function. Okay. Now the other thing is we have to pass in those um, those options. So I'm going to call that user ops ops for options. Okay. And then we actually need to do this options variable. So we don't do this that often. But really what we want to do is we're going to do var ops equals dollar sign dot extend. So this is going to extend one object onto another. We're basically going to extend the user options onto the default options. Okay. So that's going to be um, so the first parameter of extend is going to be the default options, which is going to be here, and then the second parameter is going to be the extension, which is going to be user ops. So user ops is going to override whatever I write here. So for this, I'm going to have a couple default options. Use ID, so I'm going to be creating a div on the fly, and this is going to be the ID of that div. It's going to be called uh, popped out. Okay, And then I'm going to have some padding. So padding is really the key here. To make it expand outward evenly without doing a lot of t tons of math, padding is going to be the key. Okay, So we're going to make that 20. Um, then we're going to do a border, um, because it's going to be 0 um, to start. So there's just a default border of 0, but obviously you can pass in that other border and it's going to change. And then the speed of the animation is just going to be 200 milliseconds. Okay, So that's basically that part. So now this whole thing is going to work, but let me explain. We're going to duplicate this div, paste it onto the page, and then grow it. Okay? I'm going to go through this next part pretty quick because I know I'm going to run short on time. So first we're actually going to, um, to clone the div like this. We're actually going to do var div and we're going to do this.clone. We're just going to create a carbon copy of it. Okay? Then we actually have to place it on the page. So we're actually going to do this. I'll paste this and then explain it for you. Okay. So this is just some standard CSS that we're going to do for everything. We're going to make our new div absolute. We're going to give it the border using the ops.border, ops being our options that we passed in, or the default. Um, the top is going to be this.offset as a function.top. That's actually going to give us this position right here. The ab absolutely to the window, this is absolute top left, and this is absolute, well, yeah, exactly. This is absolute top left. Okay, so offset top, offset left. We're also going to give it a WebKit and a, and a Mozilla box shadow because we really want this to pop. And then we just give it a high Z index to make sure it's on top of everything. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is store a bunch of um, attributes because we need to animate this backwards once it's done. So we're going to store all of the old variables that need to be put back. So we're going to store the ID. 
okay, for, for, first and foremost. Then the old width, the old height, the old top, the old left, and the old padding. That way we can animate it back down, okay? Now, once we've created all of the CSS that we want, other than the stuff that's going to be animated, we're going to go ahead and add this to the body. So once we do this, we're going to have a div on top of a div. It's going to look exactly the same. Nothing's changed yet, okay? We've just set some things, and we've just added it to the page. So, and we're using prepend, so it adds to the very beginning, so we make sure it's on top of everything. If we used append, it would be at the bottom and would be under everything. So the next step is actually to animate everything outward. Again, I'm going to paste this in here, and then I'll explain it. So what this is going to do is it's going to animate the top, the left, the height, and the padding. This is the four things I'm animating. This can be modified to animate other things. But basically, um, how this works, okay. So once that div is in the right spot, the amount of top needs to be um, the height that it currently is minus the height that we want it to be. And it actually needs to be whatever the bigger one is, it needs to be that position. So let me kind of explain. If I were to put the div here and then add it, it would be bigger from this corner. So I need to move it to the left a certain amount. Okay, and actually I need to do that both to, the, both to the left and the top, otherwise it's not center. So I'll show you this in a second. This is going to make way more sense when I get rid of these. And actually, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to get rid of these just so you see. The height and the padding, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. We're just animating those out. Okay, and then um, the last thing we want to do um, is just kind of animate everything back. So this is going to be on a mouse leave. And again, I'm going to go through this quick. But all it's doing is taking all the old parameters and animating them back. That's all it's doing. It's, it's not do, and it's doing it at twice the speed. And then once it's done, it's going to remove it from the page. So it's, it's really, this is very straightforward. I encourage you to read through this, but it's just animating everything to these old properties. Now one last thing at the top of this, we're actually going to kill it just in case it was there before for any reason. So we're always going to start making sure that ID doesn't exist because you can't have two IDs on the same page. So enough of me talking, let's actually show you what this does. Again, I got rid of those two parameters right here. So if I refresh this page, and I have actually a syntax error, ops is undefined. So if I need to make sure that um, I extend this properly, give me one second. Okay, what I notice here is actually I used ops right here before I actually defined ops. So this needs to be done after the, def the definition. So right here before the clone, that's where this has to happen. All right, go ahead and refresh. Uh, okay, wow, that's crazy. Okay, so again, because um, I did this once, I'm forgetting things. I forgot to put all this in a mouse over function. Duh. Okay, so once this is all done, bef before we do anything, it need this whole thing needs to be in a mouse over. That's the whole point of this. All right, so in here, we need to move this inside of our mouse over. I can't believe I forgot that. And then we need to close our mouse over. And that, again, still not tested yet, but that should. Dave is not defined. Okay, one last thing to fix. Um, I'm, I closed this in the wrong spot. I need that div value, this guy right here, to be within this mouse over so it can add the listener in the right place. So that actually needs to go here, and then this whole thing needs to be uh, moved in. There we go. Okay. There. That should be right. So if I save this and refresh, okay, no errors. Now when I hover, notice how it expands from the top left corner. See that? That's not the effect that we want. We need it to move left the padding amount and move up the padding amount minus the height. Okay, so I'll go ahead and paste those two back in. Those are the two that I got rid of, top and left. Okay, that was the whole point of getting rid of those to show you that. So now that I put them back in, the effect that I get is pretty cool. See this? Okay, this effect is awesome. There's one more thing that's not actually happening that needs to happen. The description is still being cut off. I actually don't have a way right now to actually expand things inside of here. So let's go ahead and put that in. So I'm going to make a new call here. And I'll put this in and then explain it. Um, so right here. Okay. This is complicated. Um, I'm going to try to explain it the best I can in just a minute. So we're storing a new, uh, a new property called selectors. It's an array, so you can have multiple selectors. The first ele the, the, the element in an array is an object. Okay. The first element in the object, 
all right, is the a selector that is inside. So product description is a is a element inside of our product box. And then the this is a CSS um, object that we can just throw in later so we can actually alter the CSS of this specific. So all this is doing is it's allowing us to alter the CSS within. Okay? Just know that's how you use this. And if I ever publish this, there'll be lots of examples on how to use that. So to use this, it's actually really complicated, um, unless you know what you're doing. But I'll put this here and I'll try to explain it. All this is doing, it's going to loop through each selector, okay? And then it's going to loop through each jQuery selector inside of that, grab the CSS object. So now we're actually grabbing this piece right here, uh, this piece, okay? And then we're actually going to animate that selector to those options. That's all we're doing. So with that said, what I'm able to do now is hover over and it actually will um, expand. See that description, how it's expanding to be a lot more in there? So this plugin, quote unquote, that I haven't really made yet, but this plugin actually allows you to animate parts inside of the expandable area without actually having to modify the code. So let's open a new block here and you can see that this effect is actually really cool and it works. So there's that. I might publish this, I might not, but um, here you go. This is how you would do that pop-out effect in jQuery.